Have you just picked up a BL Touch version 3 that just won't play ball? Well, here are three fixes to get it working on your 3D printer. BL Touch version 3 has been shipping for a short while now, and on some printers they've failed to trigger, making them essentially worthless. In this video, I'm going to present to you three different ways to get it working, but first, some investigation. This document is linked in the description and it's the specifications for the Smart Version 3 BL Touch. I'm not going to go through it in detail here, but there's a couple of key characteristics. Firstly, the stroke for the probing is 1.6 millimeters longer. So if you were to change from a V2 to a V3, it's going to change your Z offset from that. Secondly, some of the ranges for the PWM that send the commands to the BL Touch have changed. And we have a note here talking about 5 volt logic for unusual boards. This is the type of thing we're going to be addressing in this video. How do you know if you have a version 3? Well, it's going to be written on the side pretty clearly. The problem with the V3 sensor is that on certain printers, although the pin reacts, it doesn't send the signal to the main board and it's going to cause the nozzle to crash into the bed. There's a troubleshooting page on the Ant Collab's website and it suggests that Creality and other boards only suffer from this melody due to a capacitor in place where it shouldn't be. More on this page later, but in the meantime, I'm going to test the BL Touch version 3 on some of my other printers. We've already seen on the 114 board that the V3 is incompatible but plugging it into my Cocoon Create Touch, also known as One How Duplicator i3, it works just fine, as it does on my TiVo Tornado that comes with an MKS Gen L from Factory, but back on the Creality Ender 5 with the 113 board, we have exactly the same problem. So we know it's a problem relating to certain 3D printer main boards, and specifically the Creality 113 and 114 main boards. But what can we do about it? For our first solution, we're going to assume that you've already got the firmware set up and you're looking to add the minimal code possible to get the version 3 compatible. Firstly, thank you to Philip Beale who posted this comment and saved me a bunch of legwork. His link goes to a GitHub page with a summary of the changes needed to get this working. Let's go through it. Okay, so on the left we have our set of instructions on the changes required and on the right I have a copy of Vanilla Marlin set up for Ender 3 and BL Touch as covered in my previous guide. If we scroll down we can see it tells us the file that we need to change as well as a list of changes. Anything in red with a minus we're going to delete and anything in green with a plus we're going to add in its place. So what we can do is copy some of these and then switch to the matching file and then do Control F and search for that same thing. So we found the section, we've got one, two, three, four lines. And as it says here, we're going to delete those. And in its place, we're going to copy the six lines and paste it in. We can see that the line straight after is define test BL touch P. And we have the same thing here. So therefore that change is completely done. Now it's just a matter of repeating this. Next one being configuration.h. You'll notice here as I search for this second part, it takes me to the wrong section of the code. I could tell this because the make sure any BL touch error condition is cleared was not next to the code that was returned in the search. So what I needed to do was to keep scrolling and searching until I found the correct section and then I could drop in the new code as instructed. So those three files should be enough, and that's conditionals underscore lcd.h, configuration.h, and marlin underscore main.cpp. This one here is just setting the versioning, it shouldn't actually affect the function at all. And then all of these other files underneath are for example configurations. So for instance, we have a TAS4, an AliExpress CL260, and the list goes on. 
If we scroll all the way to the end, we'll see that the remainder of the files are all example configurations and therefore we should be able to ignore them. Let's make our Marlin full screen. I'll save it and then send it to the board. I first tested with my finger and then did an auto home and everything as you can see is working as it should again. Success, but this scenario definitely isn't for everyone. What if you were setting up Marlin for an Ender 3 and a BL Touch from scratch? I've covered most of this before, so I'm going to move really quickly and emphasize the new bits of code. And to do this, we're going to download Marlin 119 bug fix branch. If we click download on the Marlin firmware site, you can see there's a 1.1.x bug fix snapshot. That's the one we're going to download. I've unzipped the download into a folder and then I'm going to open up example configurations. In this case, I'm preparing for Creality Ender 3. So I'm going to start by copying all of the files in that folder, going back to the main Marlin folder and then pasting to override. After this, I'm going to locate and double click to open the marlin.ino file. We've copied our configuration file over, so we have our base Ender 3 setup. So let's go and make some changes for the BL Touch. Switch to configuration.h, search for BL Touch. Enable BL Touch. Enable the delay and reduce it to 100. Add an align for pin 27 board. Now we come to our new portions of code for version 3. Define BL Touch version 3 and force 5 volt mode. Put in the offsets of your mount. Up the edge to your probing. Up the speed. Define auto bed leveling by linear. I like to set up a custom probing grid so I can make it symmetrical. My offset was 43, so I'm going to make that 45 for left and right. And I'm going to go 30 for front and back. Define LCD bed leveling. Define Z safe homing. The feed rates have recently been slowed. I like them fast, so I'm going to put that up to 50 by 60 and 8 by 60. Define slim LCD menus to make everything fit. Switch to configuration advanced. Define baby step Z probe offset. Increase the multiplicator to 10. And define the graphical overlay. We'll also comment out arc support to make sure everything fits. We'll make sure we're on 18 mega 1284p and we'll verify to make sure everything works. And now that we know everything works, we're going to come to sketch, export compiled binary, and that'll give us a hex file that we can flush using our programmer. This will appear in the folder where all of your Arduino files are. And if you flash the one with the bootloader, you'll have that in place from now on. When you power on the printer again, you'll have confirmation that it's using the bug fix version of Marlin. And when I tested the homing and the probing, I found that once again, everything was working as it should be. If you happen to be using the BL Touch Kit sold from Corality for the Ender 3 and 5, as I covered in my last video, there's a link in the description to a pre-compiled hex that you can use for your version 3 sensor. Okay, scenario 3. What if you hate dealing with software and firmware, but you're quite comfortable with a soldering iron? Well, according to the Ant Clabs documentation, there's a hardware solution that should work as well. Back to this documentation from Ant Clubs, and they claim that there is a capacitor on the Z end stop pin of the main board, and that disrupts the signal coming back from the BL Touch. And that makes sense too, because capacitors are generally used to smooth out voltage, which would certainly support the theory in this case that it's preventing the proper use of the probe. They claim to remove the capacitor. They have a diagram for the schematic as well as a zoomed in diagram labeled for what we need to remove on our Ender 3 board. Very importantly, it says it's a safe and complete solution and removing it does not cause any problems in your system and any future use of any other sensor will provide better precision. We need to access our main board and unplug the pin 27 board and pull away the wires. When we do this, we'll see that in line with the labeling of Z-Stop, there will be a capacitor directly above, not the smaller resistor above it labeled R3. I got my soldering iron and it took some time to heat up, but I pushed it on one side and then the other and I was able to flick off the small capacitor. Surface mount components really are tiny and this is a pretty big one as far as they go. Double check your board to make sure there's no solder bridge where it used to be and plug back in your pin 27 board. 
I tested with the firmware set up for BL Touch version 3 and it worked perfectly and then I flashed an older version that was only set up for the original BL Touches and that worked equally well proving that this fix is also effective. There we have it, three working methods to add support for your BL Touch version 3. A reminder that if you're doing this for the first time, you need to add a G29 for ABL after the G28 in your start G code. And on your first print, you're going to need to live adjust your Z offset to get the correct first layer adhesion. Apart from that, it should be happy printing. If you were one of the people that ordered a version 3 and was stuck and frustrated by now, hopefully this has helped you out. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.